Hey everyone, it is Tuesday, May the 4th be with you, 2021. Happy Star Wars Day, and I am here today, we are here together to solve today's New York Times crossword. This is by Nina Sloan. Hey buddy. Uh, this is by Nina Sloan. It is the first Tuesday of the month, which means it is Teaching Tuesday, which means today I'm going to go somewhat slowly, or at least at first, I'm going to go slowly through this crossword, and I am going to teach how to solve a New York Times crossword. Now, this is for those of you who uh, who maybe are not used to solving crossword puzzles or are intimidated by crossword puzzles. My intention today is to talk through, as I go through solving the New York Times crossword today, and explain all of the little conventions, all of the things that might trip you up if you are new to solving crossword puzzles or uh, the New York Times crossword. And really, my intention is to just spread the joy of solving crosswords because I love puzzles, I love crossword puzzles, and I would love it if more people enjoyed them. So, uh, before I get into it, if you are uh, a veteran of crossword puzzles, Today's video is maybe not for you, like maybe you want to skip to the end and see my commentary on the puzzle, um, but uh, if you are new to crossword puzzles, this video is definitely for you. And um, let's get into it, shall we? So first of all, first things first, I'm, as I open up the puzzle, um, you can see uh, just for logistic purposes, the, the clue that I am looking at is highlighted in blue in the grid, and you can see my yellow square moving back and forth in one across there. And uh, to the left of the grid, you can see the clue that is also highlighted in blue, and that would be the clue that I am looking at and talking at, at the, talking about at the same time. That's the one highlighted in blue. So as I go along here, just look for the blue highlights, and that will be what I'm talking about. So, first of all, uh, we have a, a kind of um, interesting convention right out of the gate at one across here, which is a clue that is in quotes. Anytime there's a clue in quotes, um, generally, what that means is it is something that you say, and um, it is going to be, uh, so like, as likewise could be something that you say, the answer or what would be what we would put in the grid at one across is going to be something that you could also say and is generally said in conversation that is the equivalent of likewise and has the same meaning of likewise. So any anytime there's quotation marks, if it's not a title of anything, that means it's a, a conversational thing. Um, so likewise, um, just in terms of conversation, it could be something as simple as like same for four letters. Um, I would think like, you know, me too, or so do I, or something like that, but all of those are too long. So same seems to be good here. I don't know. Um, generally as we go along, um, there's, there's no correct or incorrect order in which to solve things. And for me personally, I like to try and just put things in. And if I have to change them later, that's fine. Um, but I would encourage, if you're new to the crossword puzzle, I would encourage you to just put things in just to try them if you have an idea and then come back to them later. Now, once we have one across here put in, if we're not totally sure about it, a good thing to do is to try and check some of those letters, and we do that by looking at the down entries. And the easiest one to start with is probably four down because it's only three letters long. Generally, the shorter ones are the easier ones to answer. Not always, not necessarily, but generally that's the case. So let's go four down. Punk Rock's moody younger sibling per Rolling Stone. So uh, this would be something that Rolling Stone called Punk Rock's Moody Younger Sibling, and I'm guessing it is emo, right? It's three letters, maybe starting with E, it's probably emo. That seems to match, right? A moody genre of rock, of punk rock, basically, is emo. So uh, that 
putting that in kind of gives me a hint that, yeah, I'm, I may be actually correct that same is the correct answer here. Um, I want to continue checking my letters though, so I'm going to go over to one down now. A bit of basil. Um, it's not a leaf. It could be spice, but that's that would be kind of weird. So a bit of basil. Uh, I'm not sure. So the other th the other thing that's important with solving crossword puzzles is like understanding that it's okay to just skip on to the next thing if you're not sure. So that's what we're gonna do here. I don't know what one down is of this bit of basil, so I'm just gonna skip on and, and go ahead to two down. Am not, come back. So this is just simply, right, we have the quotes here, so this is something that you would say in response to am not, probably are two, that seems to fit. Right, am not, are two, am not, are two. Right. Shaggy hairdo. Um, this is a pretty straightforward clue. Uh, what kind of a, a shaggy hairdo? Um, starting with M and six letters long, my the first thing that pops to mind is mop top. But actually, before I enter mop top in this time, I'm going to look at 14 across because I have two letters that I feel pretty confident about. So I'm going to double check a 14 across. A big event for high school seniors is the prom. So let's go with prom. And that, the O confirms, well, not 100%, but it, it makes it more likely that mop top is correct. So now I'm going to go ahead and put in mop top. And now I will double check 17 across. A bank take back for short is a repo. So anytime they have for short, that means it's going to be a shortening of what the real uh, full answer would be. A general rule about crosswords, and especially the New York Times, um, it does follow certain rules. And one of the rules is that um, anytime you get a clue for an answer, the, uh, the answer for that clue is going to be the official, like, full, complete word or phrase for that clue, unless the clue gives you a reason to shorten it. And in this case, as we can see, it says for short. So it's not repossession, it is repo for short. And now I think this SPR, this bit of basil is going to be a sprig of basil, but I'm before I type it in, I'm gonna double check at 20 across the Adams family cousin. I happen to know that that is cousin it. Right? That is the character on the Adams family. So uh, yeah, that all but settles it that this is indeed Sprig. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and look at 23 across. Candy with an insulting name number one. Okay, so generally, here's, Here's where we get into an interesting situation here, because generally, um, Tuesday puzzles in the New York Times are what we call themed puzzles. And um, themed puzzles are just puzzles that have certain answers in the grid, certain uh, parts of the, of the grid are uh, connected in some way. And generally, those are the long, longest answers going across, going horizontally in the grid. 23 across might be one of them because this candy with an insulting name, number one, is an interesting clue. And it is not, candy with an insulting name by itself would not be nece necessarily a uh, an interesting or different clue that would raise any flags, but the fact that there's number one attached to the end makes me think that this is maybe part of the theme and maybe this answer and now that I think about it this might be goobers because goobers is a candy and it is kind of an insulting name I guess like oh you goober I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in because goo yeah um, but number one I don't know why it says number one. And that is something that will probably 
be made more clear as we go through the grid. I'm, I'm guessing if this is part of the theme of this puzzle. Uh, but I'm not going to worry about that right now because generally for a Tuesday puzzle I and mean, for most of the New York Times puzzles, you shouldn't really worry about the theme too much, especially when you're new to it. Um, generally, anytime there's a theme to the puzzle, you want to just basically kind of skip over it until you get more towards the end of solving the puzzle. Oh, that my cat is, hi. Hey buddy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, anyways, let's, um, let's move along and go to five across enthralled. So we have a single word clue here, um, which generally when that happens, the answer that we want to put in the grid is also going to be a single word that could be a replacement for that word in a sentence. Um, enthralled could be wrapped, like wrapped attention. I'm not sure, that's just a guess. Uh, but as is, as I did with same over here, the first thing that I wanna do when I'm not sure is double check these letters, right? And the easiest place to do that is at eight down here with only three letters. Um, blank pre-check, that would be a TSA pre-check. That's a simple, that's a, uh, these kind of clues are really like, not necessarily the easiest, but the most straightforward kind of clues where it's just fill in the blank, right? What is something that could go in this blank before the word pre-check? Um, and the capital letters there in pre-check also clue us into the fact that this is a like brand name thing or like a copyrighted name kind of thing or an official title of something. So TSA pre-check is an official title of something. So I think that's right. And I, that makes me think that wrapped is right, but we're still gonna continue checking it with seven down. Seals to great white char sharks uh, are probably prey, right? Great white sharks would look at seals as prey. So seals are prey to great white sharks. Uh, mine and yours, right? That would be ours. Six down, vibes. Uh, this is one that is, I, I, can, I can tell you right now, it's auras, right? And the AU at the beginning is a big hint there, obviously, because there's only so many words that have this many letters <laughs> that start with AU. Uh, but also aura, is a good one to remember because aura comes up a lot in crossword puzzles. Um, the reason being, it is a very, very convenient combination of letters um, with three vowels and an R in there, as well as an S if you use the plural. Um, it's a really, really useful combination of letters uh, to fill in a, a crossword grid when you have so many letters that need to cross crisscross like this. Um, having a lot of vowels and really common letters like R and S uh, is really useful. So auras is, uh, it comes up in crosswords a lot. <laughs> um, there are other words that also come up in crosswords a lot, such as this one, length times width for a rectangle is area. Area also comes up in crosswords a lot. Uh, so let's go on, five down. Fit on a hard drive with a question mark. Here is a, our first clue with a question mark. Now a question mark clue is a special kind of clue. Anytime a clue has a question mark on the end, that means that there is some kind of play on words happening in this, uh, re in the relationship between the clue and its answer in the grid. So a fit on a hard drive. Um, I am not quite sure. Usually the question mark clues are going to be the hardest ones to answer. Um, I'm not quite sure what this is. So um, often if you come across a question mark clue and you don't know what you're looking at, it's best probably just to skip it and come back to it later when you have a few more letters filled in, which is what I'm going to do right now. Let's go to 21 across. Annual celebration for short, so we, here we have another shortening of something like we did with 17 across, repo. Um, so this is gonna be a shortened version of something. Uh, and what is something that you celebrate every year? Uh, I'm guessing it's something day. 
right? Like uh, it could be B day for birthday. It could be V day for Valentine's day. It could be D day. It could be, well, D day is not really a shortening though. So it's probably not D day. It's just called D day. Uh, so some kind of day is what I'm guessing. Let's look at 21 down. Bit of special forces headwear. Um, special forces wear berets on their head, right? So let's go with beret. That's probably it. And then B-Day. So that makes sense. Let's go to 28 across because we have a lot of letters here. La Boheme for one. So anytime there's for one, that means it's giving an example of something. So the, uh, the answer should be like a category that that fits into, and that would be opera, right? La Boheme is an opera. Let's go back to five down. Fit on a hard drive. Now, this looks like road rage. Does that match? Fit. On, oh, yes. Like you're throwing a fit on a hard drive, like driving. Uh, yeah. So that's that's the play on word. Uh, on words here like it's not a hard drive like a hard drive in a computer it's a hard like a difficult drive and you're throwing a fit rather than you're fitting data into a hard drive uh you're actually throwing a fit on a hard drive um so that's road rage so that's that's the play on words aspect ha happening here and like i said that is difficult. The question mark clues are the most difficult ones. So it's generally best to just skip them and come back to them later after you have more letters filled in. Uh, all right, 24 down. Ernie's partner on TV is Bert. That's really straightforward, right? Bert and Ernie. Okay, nine across. One in a stack for an English teacher to grade. Um, so one in a stack. One of the rules of crossword puzzles and the clues and answers and the relationship between them is clues and answers have to match in terms of plurality or singularity. So if the clue is in a singular form, the answer will be in a singular form. If the clue is in a plural form, the answer will be in a plural form, right? They also have to match in tense uh, for when there's verbs, for example. So like, if it uh, sits down, <laughs> this, that was a, a weird example to take because I didn't have an answer in mind. But basically, if you are conjugating your verb for like he, then the answer will be matching that conjugation, right? And the same thing for like, if your clue is in past tense, uh, the answer will also be in past tense, right? So conjugations match. Uh, always and plurality matches always in this case nine across we have one in a stack so it's going to be a singular right uh, for an English teacher to grade English teachers usually grade essays so this is probably a singular essay and uh, the thing that we're going to do next as uh, we did before is double check that by looking at the down entries here for these three letter entries 12 down first terrier sound Right, the sound that a terrier makes is probably an arf, right? And affirmative is like, uh, there's actually a few things that this could be. This could, well, this could be like a yes. That's like the most straightforward. It could be also a yay. Those, those are probably the two possible answers that it could be. Um, so to, to check if it is yes, one really easy way to check if it's gonna be a yes is looking at 19 across. And if 19 across, uh, blank frozen adventure is probably Olaf's frozen adventure. So there we go, that confirms that's going to be a yes. The other thing that I was going to say um, is like the rule about singulars and pluralities and also conjugations like S's often um, go with singulars and pluralities like this one vibes and auras, right? S and then candy with an insulting name is goobers. Well, that's the name of the candy, right? But so, um, if 19 across was, if the clue was going to be some plural thing, then I would immediately know that this S was correct. It happened to be a different kind of clue. So that didn't really help, but I did know that this was a lost frozen adventure. So that helped anyways, in the end, let's look at 16 across the hunchback of blank 
Dame or Dom uh, is Notre. And here we have, interestingly, two Disney fill in the blank titles stacked one on top of the other. Um, I don't know if that's on purpose or not. Probably is. That's pretty cool. Anyways, let's look at the down clues here. Nine down. Exasperated cry. Uh, so something that you would cry when you were exasperated is probably enough. And then something that disappears in a chemistry experiment would be SOL something. I don't know. Stuffy atmosphere. I also don't know that. So we'll just skip it and try and fill in more letters going across. Big name in vapes is Jewel. Right? Anytime it says big name, that's going to be a big like brand name or a famous person's name, right? Big name in vapes, uh, that'll be Jewel. 25 across, a wrestling duo is a, uh, that's, this is a straightforward thing. It's just a tag team, right? A duo in wrestling, you would call a, uh, a tag team. Something that disappears is a salute, probably. And then let's check 22 down because that's, uh, we have already two out of the three letters. Jam container is a jar. It's really straightforward. 27 down. The Spartans of the Big Ten in brief. So in brief is uh, more or less the same as this for short when we have at 21 across for short and 17 across for short. In brief is generally the same thing. It's It means that the answer is a shortened version of what the actual answer is. Um, the Spartans of the Big Ten, I do not know what school or what the Spartans uh, mas mascot is representing, so um, I, I can't answer this. Uh, it might be like Michigan State University, which would be MSU, but I really have no confidence in that, so I just have to skip it and come back. Let's look at 26 down. Hubbubs. Um, now this, I am going to be able to, so first of all, it's hubbubs with an S on the end, so it's plural. So this is going to end in S, probably, because it's going to be plural. The other thing is, um, this is another one of these words like aura, A-U-R-A, uh, that is a word that comes up in crosswords a lot because it has some useful letters in it. And that word is ado, A-D-O. It's just a useful word that comes up in crosswords a lot because D is a very common letter. And then of course, vowels are very common, A and O. Um, so like much ado about nothing will often come up in crosswords or hubbub or uh, like um, a ruckus or something like that, where um, that could mean the same thing as generally ado. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, and that's just one of those things that like, once you do crosswords a lot, you start to recognize when that will come up. Um, and the same with auras as well. It's like, a do is not a word that you think of often in day-to-day -day life. But if you do crosswords a lot, you start to think of it more and more because it does appear often. Um, all right, 32 across. Debtors letters. Uh, letters tells me that this is going to be uh, probably just like initials of something. And for debtors, I'm guessing this is I O U, right? Cause if you owe something, right, you have an I O U. Uh, let's look at 11 down again. Now that we have a few more letters in stuffy atmosphere, um, we have stale already in there. So let's put in air, right? The atmosphere part is the air. Uh, and this is a good time for me to point out the fact, uh, and the same with tag team as well, uh, that sometimes your answer will be more than one word. <laughs> uh, and there is, the New York Times never gives any indication that if your answer is only one word or two words or three words, it never tells you. Um, so you just have to kind of figure that out on your own. Um, there are some crosswords that do tell you in the clue if this is one word or two words or three words, etc. Uh, but the New York Times and most American style crosswords do not give any indication of that. Um, so 
there is no reason to assume that your answer is going to be just one word. Uh, sometimes it could be more than one, like in the case of stale air. Uh, let's go with 29 across. Candy with an insulting name, number two, and now number two. This immediately makes me think back to 23 across here with a candy with an insulting name, number one. Now we have candy with an insulting name, number two. So um, obviously these are connected, right? The clues are nearly identical with, with the only difference being that the number has increased uh, or, or proceeded sequentially. And um, I, so obviously these are part of the theme, although I don't know what the theme exactly is yet. I can see that it looks like this is Airheads because I just happen to know that that is the name of a candy. And we already had R-H-E-A-D. Uh, and so I could just tell that Airheads fit right in there. And so that confirms that I was correct about MSU here. And then uh, let's confirm this, uh, this I and A by looking at the down clues. 25 down, connection. Um, connection. That I'm actually not sure about. So I'm gonna skip it. 29 down, Italian luxury cars familiarly. Familiarly. Um, are these alphas? I think it might be alphas, but I'm not totally sure. Um, just because me personally, I am not, uh, I'm not too um, knowledgeable about cars, but I, I do know that because this is Italian luxury cars with an S, this is probably ending in an S. Uh, let's look at 30 across. Entertain with a story. Um, so this is, an example of when we have a verb, right? Entertain with a story is a is an action, right? That's that as a phrase that is a verb. It is a verb phrase. You, it's an action that someone does. So the answer is going to be an action also, and it's going to match the tense of this, or the conjugation of this one, so of entertain. Uh, so it's not entertains with a story, it, or it's not entertained with a story, it is entertain with a story, as in I entertain with a story. Um, and I think this is going to be regale. I think it's regale. Let's go with that, which um, does seem to point to the fact that alphas is correct. So I'm going to put alphas in. Let's look at 25 down again. Now that we have one more letter, connection, tie, tie in maybe. And this is again, one of the tricky parts of, of them not giving any indication of whether it's one word or two words in the answer, like tie in. Um, I think it might be tie-in. Let's look at 39 across and see if that helps. Little bird of mine with a question mark. Uh, I, it's a question mark clue, so I'm not even going to spend any time thinking about it right now because it's probably going to be too tough for me to figure out. Let's look at 33 across. Now this is, uh, it looks to be the longest answer in the entire puzzle. So um, this probably is connected to the theme. And uh, I mean, I, I could have guessed that before I even looked at the clue. And now, of course, that I see the clue, I see it is a candy with an insulting name, number three. So of course it is connected to the clue. And uh, another candy that fits here looks to be Butterfingers. Um, so, so far our theme is just candy names that could also be kind of insults in a way. You goober, you airhead, hey Butterfingers. Uh, let's see, 31 down, traveled in a parabola. Now here we have another action phrase or verb phrase that is conjugated in past tense, traveled. 
So that means our answer is going to be probably ED. So uh, that helps me to figure out that this is arced, right? If you arced, then you traveled in a, in a parabola. Okay, 39 across, little bird of mine. Uh, is this a canary? I think it's a canary, but I'm not sure why. Did they used to take canaries into mines? I don't really know why, but I think it's a canary. Uh, I'm going to skip it, though, and come back to it, actually. Let's look at 38 across. Prefix with sexual. So this means it's just a, a prefix that can be attached to the word sexual. Uh, so what, pansexual or, or is cissexual a thing? Might be pan. What's 38 down? Phi, chi, something, omega. That I don't know. So we're filling the blank in a series. Uh, Greek letters do come up a lot in crosswords, but I am still not all that familiar with them. It could be psi, P-S-I, maybe. And this would be pansexual. Um, this is guessing. It's educated guessing, but it's not 100% sure. But I'm going to double check by looking at 33 down first. Lip lotion, right? Lotion that you put on your lips is a balm, right? Lip balm. And 34 down, still in its original packaging, would be what, unopened or un, uh, well, does unopened fit? Yes, unopened does fit. So let's, let's keep that in. Um, so one thing that you wanna do, looking back and forth between the grid itself and the, the clues uh, on the left side, you wanna check and see if, uh, like, Look, you want to keep your eye on the grid. Don't only look at the clues. Keep your eye on the grid also, because sometimes you might have unusual letter pairings like this MP. Um, it's not impossible, right? Impossible has an MP next to each other, right? But uh, it is an unusual word pairing. So that helps to narrow down the possible answers quite a lot. So I want to look at 447 across next, uh, because that MP is really going to narrow down the answer for us and that that will help me figure it out probably a lot faster uh, or it, it will help me figure out if it's incorrect also a lot faster but 47 across is stuck on a stake and um, I know that that is impaled right so let's look at 43 down now that we have the middle letter a symbol of ownership uh, interesting that I'm not sure of so I'm gonna skip it. 40 across, candy with an insulting name, number four. And slow, candy with an insulting name, number four. Slow, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking of insulting names. I'm not sure what this candy is. The first thing that comes to mind is slow poke. Is that a candy though? I'm not sure if that's a candy. So let's go to 41 down. Green layer on the Statue of Liberty. Green layer on the Statue of Liberty. Now that's interesting also. I'm not sure what that is either. <clears throat> Mary Kate and Ashley, uh, those are, so here we have an and clue. Anytime you have a clue with two things and it's and, that's going to be a plural, right? Because it's both of them, right? The answer has to include both of them, which means it is a plural. And Mary Kate and Ashley are Olsons. Although I'm not sure if it's Olson with an O here or with an E. Um, I think it might be an E, but I'm going to have to double check that with the across. 53 across, a lamp dweller. Nope, don't know what that is. 53 down, Wrigley's product is gum. Oh, lamp dweller is a genie. Now I see it. So it is an E there. Wrigley's product is gum. Again, these are all singulars, right? The, the clue is singular, so the answer is singular. 54 down, prefix with center. Another prefix one, the same as we had pansexual. 
Uh, a prefix that can go before center is probably epi, epicenter. Uh, and then 57 across Philly Ivy is UPenn. The University of Pennsylvania is an Ivy League school in Philly. Um, here is an example of the same general principle of this B day, right? Annual celebration for short and repo, where we have a bank take back for short. Uh, UPenn is a shortening of University of Pennsylvania, obviously. The clue, however, doesn't say for short, but there is a hint in the clue that tells us that the answer is going to be a shortening, and that is the word Philly. Philly is not the official name of Philadelphia. It is a shortened version of the name Philadelphia. So that clues us into the fact that the answer is also going to be a shortened version of whatever the official full name of the answer is. Okay, so that is the other way that they can clue you in to, uh, hey, the answer is not the official full name, it's a shortened version. Okay, 41 down, did we, did we figure that out yet? No. I still don't know what this is. If this is slow pokes, this is a P, P, A. No, I still don't know what that is. I'm gonna delete that because I'm still not sure. Let's look at 60 across. One with the golden touch would be Midas. King Midas had a golden touch. 50 across. Crafty online marketplace is Etsy, right? Online marketplace for crafts. I still don't know what this is. Is this patina? Is that a thing? Symbol of ownership is a key. A key is definitely a sim symbol of ownership. So I'm gonna go with slow pokes here because that matches the insulting name requirement here. I don't know what the candy is, if that is a candy or not, but it does match. Patina, I'm not sure what that means, but I can't think of anything else that would match here. So I'm gonna go with it and hope that it's right. And sometimes that's what you gotta do in crosswords is just go with it and hope that you're right. Uh, which I'm gonna do here also, cause I think this might be canary, but I'm not totally sure. I'm gonna check with 37 down first. Watched. Uh, here we have an example of a, a verb that is conjugated in the past tense. So this would be eyed, right? You can eye something. Right? That's the same as watching something. Like, oh, he's been eyeing me all night. He's been watching me all night, right? So, I. Okay, 36 down. A thousand of them equal a kilo. Uh, a thousand grams equals a kilo. Uh, this clue had them, right? So, we know it's got to be a plural. There. Okay. 35 down, person who appreciates a walk in the woods, say. Um, here we have this comma with say on the end. So that means, um, what's the best way to explain this? And it, this is a common kind of clue that you might see in, in a New York Times crossword or in an American style crossword is uh, some description and then comma say at the end. Um, that means that the answer, what we are meant to fill in the grid, is just an example of this description, but it's not the only possible answer to this clue, right? But it's an example of this description. Um, it's close to the play on words kind of one clues like with the question marks but not quite it's not always a play on words sometimes it's just an example like um like the the clue could be interpreted in multiple ways and this is just one way to interpret it um so i'm not sure what this is off the top of my head so i'm going to skip it 44 across 1990s fitness fad uh i happen to know that is Thai bow just having grown up in the 90s <laughs> um yeah that was a thing <laughs> 45 down profession of the protagonist stevens in ishiguro's the remains of the day i have actually read this um and i know that that is uh stevens was a butler 
so I, that's just lucky. Brunch dish. Uh, this might be an omelet. Does that fit? It does fit. Let's go with that omelet. Uh, but I'm not totally sure about omelet. So I'm going to check at 52 across here. Crew neck or V neck is a type of tea. Now, uh, this is a good time to uh, talk about another convention in cluing and answers here. We have uh, or here, crew neck or V neck. This is in contrast to 42 down where we had Mary Kate and Ashley. If you remember, I, I said, because it says and in the clue, that means this is going to be a plural answer. And as, as you can see, it is Olson's with an S. Um, in this case, at 52 across, we have crew neck or V neck. That is an indication that it is going to be a singular answer um, because it is an answer that could refer to one or the other, but not both at the same time. So, and thus T. If it said crew neck and V neck, then the answer would have to be T's with an S. Um, but in this case, it's crew neck or V neck, so it's a T. Okay. Uh, let's see, where do we want to go next? Let's go look at 56 across. Fitzgerald of Jazz. Uh, this is another one that comes up in crosswords a lot. Ella Fitzgerald uh, comes up a lot. And also Etta James comes up a lot in, in clues, in crosswords, because uh, they just have names with very useful letters in them for filling out a crossword grid. Uh, let's look at 59 across. Swarm with. Oh, this is great. So we have a clue here that has parentheses with um, at the end. Uh, that means that the answer is going to be a, a word that you also... So swarm with as a phrase is the clue to the answer. And the answer is a word that you also attach with at the end to, to mean the same thing as swarm with. So uh, in this case, I'm guessing it is team with. So you have swarm with and team with uh, that generally mean kind of the same thing here. That's, uh, so that's when, anytime you see parentheses at the end of a crossword clue, that's what it means is it means you should have, in your head, attach that word in parentheses to the end of whatever the answer is as well to match the same meaning. 56 down. Pilot's announcement for short. Uh, the, here we have a shortened version of an answer. A pilot would often announce an ETA. So let's put in an uh, estimated time of arrival, ETA. Uh, let's see, music and theater. Here we have an and, so it's going to be a plural and we already have most of the letters. They are arts. Good, 59 down, bursting at the blank. That's going to be seams. Straightforward, fill in the blank. And then 48 across, here we have a candy with an insulting name number five. Uh, this is just dum-dums, it's gotta be. Great, okay. Uh, that might be the end of our themed entries here. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be any kind of revealer or anything. So let's just keep going. Uh, a person who appreciates a walk in the woods say, uh, this might be like a naturist. Is that a thing? I'm not sure if that's a thing, but I'm going to put it in. Whoops. Naturist. Oh gosh. Wrist. <laughs> there we go. Um, I think that that's probably wrong. Cause I know naturalist is a word. I'm not sure if naturist is a word, but I'm gonna put it in and uh, we'll see if I have to change it. 51 across, blank d'oeuvres, uh, fill in the blank, that's or d'oeuvres. 48 down, karate schools are dojos. And again, matching plural to plural. This is karate schools with an S, so it's dojo with an S, dojos. Uh, 55 across, peak viewable from Tokyo on a clear day. That is Mount Fuji. That is a peak that is viewable from Tokyo. Uh, 51 down, Leviathan is maybe huge. 
And then 58 across is what coaches on star-laden teams must handle. It's egos. Ego is also one of these words that comes up in crosswords a lot. Because it's just, I mean, E and O are just convenient letters. Uh, it's, it's nice to have a three-letter word with common vowels. That's nice. Uh, and we are down to our last letter. Let's check 55 down. Bog. Uh, that's interesting. I'm actually not sure what that is. 61 across, a sticky spot with a question mark. Sticky spot with a question mark. Is this a test? Bog is fet. Is that right? No, it's not. Bog. Sticky spot. Ooh. What is this? Nest? Yes, it is nest. There we go. Uh, so sticky spot. I guess because a nest sticks together. Oh yes, sticks. Sticky. Ha, that's great. Okay. Uh, so, oh, yeah, that, that's what happens a lot of the time is you don't get, you don't understand the uh, the pun or the play on words that's happening until after you fill it in. And that is the case here. Sticky spot. It's using sticky as uh, to mean like full of sticks, <laughs> not sticky like, ooh, it's gooey and sticky, but stick as in just like, there's a lot of sticks here. So a sticky spot a spot with a lot of sticks is a nest, right? Nests are made out of sticks. Uh, so that's the answer here. Fen for bog. I, uh, this is new to me. I'm actually not familiar with this. So uh, I didn't know that, but uh, we managed to get it anyways. Um, and that's why crosswords are great. Like that's what makes a good crossword generally is like, if you don't know the down one, oh, then you should be able to get it from the across. Um, Generally, uh, if a crossword is made well, they sh they try to mix up the style of clues for the across ones and the down ones so that if you don't know one, you should be likely to get the other uh, and vice versa. Um, so uh, there we go. We did it. That is how you solve a New York Times crossword. Uh, I hope that this was a useful video for you. If you have any questions, about anything for solving New York Times crosswords or solving crosswords in general, um, please feel free to leave a comment below. Um, we didn't really talk about uh, uh, themes that much today because today's theme was really straightforward. It just is a collection of candy names that are uh, happen to be also insults at the same time or very mild insults, but sure, insults nonetheless. Uh, Goober, Airhead, Butterfinger, uh, Slowpoke, and Dum Dums. Um, but uh, generally, uh, in case you're not aware, in the New York Times, Monday through Thursday puzzles have a theme like this, where there are some answers that are connected in some way or have some common theme that runs through them. Um, so these are this is what is called the theme of the puzzle. Uh, it's not super important for solving the puzzle always, but it does, it can be helpful if you can pick up on it. Um, it can be helpful for filling out the grid. But um, there are also themeless puzzles. Uh, New York Times Friday and Saturday puzzles are themeless in which there is absolutely no uh, overarching theme of the puzzle. Each clue you treat as a separate thing and you just go through the puzzle, filling in things wherever you can. Um, but that's it for today. I hope, uh, yeah, like I said, I hope this helped. If you want to see more like this, if you want to continue following me, I put out these videos where I solve the New York Times uh, Monday through Thursday with occasionally another puzzle thrown in on the weekend plus a live stream of the Sunday crossword uh, on uh, usually Saturday night or Sunday morning, depending on your time zone. And uh, that is it today. So please subscribe if you want to see more. Please like this video if you haven't already. And I will see y'all 
tomorrow. Thanks. I hope you have a great day and happy Star Wars Day, guys. Bye-bye.